Close your eyes and watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Any other thoughts that come up in the mind right now, you just let them go. You don't have to follow them. Just stay here with the sensation of the breathing and see if you can make the breathing feel good. Take a cup of good, long, deep in and out breaths and let it ventilate the, the torso. Energize the torso. And then allow that sense of energy to spread. You find that simply by staying with the breath, you can develop a sense of well-being inside. Drop a lot of the tension that we tend to carry around. And staying with the breath also develops good qualities in the mind. You have to be mindful to keep it in mind. In other words, remember to stay here, don't forget. Alert to what the mind is actually doing. And then ardent. In other words, you really try to do this well. As soon as you sense that the mind is drifted away from the breath, you bring it back. While it's with the breath, you try to keep it here as consistently as you can. And find a way of getting the breath and the mind to be on good terms with each other. So you're getting both a sense of well-being right now and also developing good qualities of mind. Qualities that will stand you in good stead, whatever you do. Because they make you more alert to what you're doing. We train the mind in this way because life is hard enough as it is. Aging, illness and death, separation, these things can place huge burdens on the mind. But then we add more burdens on top of it by our own thoughtless ways of acting and thinking and speaking. So you want to be able to watch the mind to see when it's wandering off into ways that are unskillful, and then you can bring it back again. That way you're not adding on to the, the suffering that's already there in life. And as you get more and more skilled at this, you begin to realize that the things that actually weigh the mind down are not the things outside, they're the things that we do inside. Our ways of looking for instant pleasure without any, cons any thought of the consequences in terms of long-term pain. We want to look for a, a well-being that's long-term, that's solid, that's secure. You have the sense of well-being that comes with the breath, it's a lot easier to put yourself in a position where you can look for that more solid well-being. And also get more and more sensitive to what you're doing in the slightest ways that the way you're thinking and speaking and acting add unnecessary burdens to the mind. You can drop them, and the mind can stand tall. It's not weighed over by its burdens. So we train the mind so it can learn how to look after itself. And so it's not causing itself unnecessary pain, but actually can find ways of putting an end to all kinds of stress and suffering that it places on itself. And when you do this, you're doing it not only for yourself, but also for the people around you. If you're burdened with unskillful thinking, unskillful attitudes, you become a burden on others as well. However, the less greed, aversion, and delusion you have in your thinking, the less is going to come out in your actions, and the less other people are going to be subjected to it. So we're doing this both for ourselves and for the people around us, to help lift some of the burdens of the world, take them off our shoulders and not add any onto other people's shoulders. That's a skill worth developing, a skill worth giving a lot of time and attention to because it lies at the basis of all other skills that we need in life.